All right, now to our Making the Grade segment. Indiana is one of several states expected to take the Obama administration's offer to waive certain requirements of the No Child Left Behind law. Reforms implemented by Governor Mitch Daniels and the state's school superintendent seem to be working there. Indiana is only one of 10 states ranked above average in a recent study on the readiness of students of math and science. So, so joining me now, Governor Mitch Daniels. Governor, let me start with the news of the week. We saw Arne Duncan come out, Secretary of Education, offer up this waiver program because it looks like No Child Left Behind, a revamped version of it, isn't going to get through this Congress anytime soon. What are some of the waivers you're going to be asking for? First, let me thank Secretary Duncan. I think he's doing exactly the right thing here, Chuck. Ideally, Congress would have gotten organized to make the necessary modifications, but in the, in the absence of that, I think it's right for the department to act. And we're most interested in uh, the flexibility to measure the growth of students, not simply their absolute levels. Take into account that the teacher of the school does not control the level at which kids uh, enter school. And what we're doing in Indiana is measuring and then holding schools and uh, accountable, rewarding those teachers who help a child grow at least a year for every year in the classroom. And that's the single most important thing that uh, change that we could ask for and the secretary, uh, to his credit, is going to provide it. You know, it's interesting, Governor, you were in the Bush administration when No Child Left Behind was created. It was a, a bipartisan effort between Ted Kennedy, the president, John Boehner uh, involved in that. And, and when the law was written at the time, what wasn't foreseen, and now that you're on the state side of things, what wasn't foreseen at the time when they wrote the law that has made it, frankly, so controversial to so many state governors, regardless of party? First, I'd say the, the law gets more grief than it deserves. We needed accountability in education. We, we came off decades in which the education establishment said, just shovel in some more money and shut up. And uh, national policy finally said, no, we want to see every child um, uh, have a chance to succeed in life. We're tired of minority kids and others uh, being uh, hidden, their, their failure being hidden in the averages. So the, the general idea of No Child Left Behind deserved the bipartisan support that it had. But it was a pretty clumsy implement, as, as was quickly learned. And I'll go back to the, the point I made earlier. It isn't fair, really, to hold a teacher or a school accountable uh, for a child who might have arrived at school with um, very, very far behind. Uh, it may be impossible for that kid to pass a test um, that's really meant for uh, those students who are succeeding. But it is fair to see whether that teacher, that principal, that school district is helping the child grow and catch up over time. And th that's the kind of new flexibility that Secretary Duncan's now going to apparently uh, afford us. What is the federal accountability that should be there? I mean, that's what I think has been the, the sort of the push and pull over decades in this fight between local control of schools, but at the same time you want a some sort of national standards of some sort that make students competitive globally. I think this is another example, uh, Chuck, a great one, of where the uh, we're all learning together and making improvements. So uh, um, the idea of uh, the federal government setting national standards would be a terrible one, but the states uh, uh, have not uh, uh, waited on Washington, really. They have acted together, almost every state now part of a program. Uh, to uh, draw up among us some standards. So we're all jumping over the same bar. Uh, we know where our, how our kids rank compared to kids elsewhere. But it's not controlled from Washington. And I think that's another good example of how we're learning, finally, to uh, implant some accountability into uh, public education without forfeiting local control. You know, I can't help myself. Got to ask you a couple political questions. Number one, what do you think of the field with Rick Perry as a member of the Republican presidential field that you're not a member of? And I know a lot of people wanted you to be. What do you think of the field now? Is it complete in your mind? I don't know. Obviously, uh, uh, Rick didn't think it was. Maybe there'll be a few others. Uh, and I think the more the merrier. I think it's got some really good people in it, people with the character and skill set to be president. And, you know, my, my one hope is that the uh, Republican field will speak the language of unity, will uh, explain to every American we are in this together. We have a mathematical problem with the debt, and we have a, uh, a transcendent problem to get this economy growing at a much faster rate. And whatever your politics and whatever your status, uh, your situation in life, um, you have a stake in that. So let's come together and do those, take those actions that will be effective at a faster-growing American economy that therefore can 
uh, pay the uh, debts we've piled up. We have heard governors have been sitting on the sidelines waiting to, Republican governors, waiting to rally around somebody. A bunch of them were ready to rally around you or, and, uh, or potentially Haley Barber. Both you uh, and Governor Barber decided not to run. Do you expect these governors, a lot of governors, to rally around Rick Perry? Not sure. I mean, I, I think it all depends on what the, uh, Governor Perry or other candidates have to say. You know, governors as a as a species, uh, we're pretty action oriented. We're pretty pretty practical. You have to be in one of these jobs, and um, uh, w whatever candidate, whether they're, uh, we've got some other former governors in the field uh, who could be contenders. I think to uh, uh, attract the, uh, uh, the and excite people like uh, like me and my colleagues. And do you plan on endorsing before the primaries end, or are you going to stay out of this? Well, first, I don't know who'd care much, uh, you know, what I thought, but the uh, uh, I'm just waiting and seeing. As I said, there are a lot of good people out there. A lot of them I, I could easily imagine supporting enthusiastically. Uh, it's not uh, that's not in question. What I want to hear is is what they have to say. How clearly and boldly and positively they're ready to say to America the, the kind of things I suggested a minute ago. No regrets? And I'm pretty busy at a, at a, at a job uh, I care a lot about. Uh, I got 18 months to try to uh, make yeah. Indiana schools even a lot better than they are now and that'll keep me busy. So no second thoughts, huh? Uh, no, sir. Okay, Governor Mitch Daniels, thanks for coming on this morning, talking education and a little politics. Appreciate it.